Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of New York City. <laughs> no. For those of you who wanted more of Olive, you're going to have to listen to her squeaky toy. <laughs> This is the recap of The Real Housewives of New York City, Season 10, Episode 5. <laughs> oh my God. T for tat. The show opens and we're back in New York City. It's close to Thanksgiving. Tinsley's getting her highlights done. Dorinda opened a box that turned out to be something she had to put together again and she's complaining about that. And Ramona is at Sur La Table and she's shopping around. First of all, she makes a big scene about the sample. Is there too much garlic in it? And the, this whole story about, well, I don't, I'm not going to kiss anybody tonight. No, Nobody wants your life story, Ramona. She is searching for a cappuccino maker, I think, because Avery wants to start making cappuccino. So she finds a little one and to the confession camp, she tells us that I marvel every time I see her get ready for work, the way she's dressed and she's very focused. She sets goals and she makes it happen. Sort of like me. But does she have your self-esteem? Then, while she's still in the store, she calls Dorinda and invites her to this very special event she's having. She's hosting a party for her friends at Henry Bendel's. A shopping party or something? I don't know. It sounds like something I wish I was invited to. She also mentions, well, first of all, this is kind of funny because she's standing in the knife section she's kind of like fondling this large chef's knife while she's talking about sonia <laughs> and she said you know i invited sonia too i don't know why because i don't really know what's going on with her but i did invite her now i actually think it's kind of nice that ramona invited her because she just got that big long text from her calling her a pos I don't know that I would have invited her. Next, we're at Bethany's new apartment. I mean, it's still just being renovated. And Sonia, I guess, is the, her first guest. And Bethany is saying, you know, the way everybody's treating her, it's like she's a leper. And, I, you know, we're in third grade and she's the kid at the, down at the end of the table with the lunch tray that, with weird food on it. Nobody's talking to her and it's making Bethany uncomfortable. Yeah. Bethany is such a humanitarian. Actually, she kind of is. <laughs> I was just thinking of what she did for Puerto Rico. But she's not really like that with people. So she's showing her around. This is going to be the master bedroom. This is going to be there. And she takes her into this room that's 225 square feet. That's going to be her closet. Yeah. In New York City, in Soho. I mean, you could get an apartment that's less than 225 square feet in Soho, and it would be like 4,000 a month. The bathroom is 300 square feet. And you know, here's the thing. She's gonna get it all finally the way she wants it. She'll live there for six months and then move on. Okay, Sonia and Bethany are having this discussion and Bethany thinks that she's got Sonia all figured out. That Sonia's problem with Tinsley is that all she was trying to say is that other people have stayed with her in the past. Luann has stayed with her and, and other people have stayed with her and nobody's ever acted like it was a horrible experience except for Tinsley. And if Tinsley had all this money, then why didn't she move out if it was so bad? So that's why she's assuming that the money it came from Scott, because if Tinsley had the money all along, she would have moved out long ago instead of stay at Sonia's but complain about how bad it is there. I kind of get it too, when you put it that way. Of course, Bethany is gonna take credit for solving the puzzle. Next scene is Carol and Tinsley. They are in a store called Sweaty Betty and they're shopping for something. I don't know what, but Tinsley is getting herself all prepared because she's going to Chicago to see Scott. She wants that weekend to end with them being boyfriend and girlfriend. Then she says to Carol, I saw you with Adam at the marathon 
and you guys are totally boyfriend and girlfriend. So Carol tells her to kind of slow her roll that yes, they've sort of fallen back into a nice rhythm of seeing each other again, but it isn't quite as intense as when they live together. Okay, back to Bethany. She is now in a photo shoot because she is launching into the world of denim. Yes, Bethany Frankel, who doesn't have enough on her plate, is now going to have a line of jeans. Of course she is. <laughs> Next, we have Luann, who is apartment hunting, and she brought Dorinda with her. She says that she just wants to move into a furnished apartment she doesn't want to have to buy a single lamp. She just wants to hang her clothes and she's moved in. I can't imagine not wanting your own furniture, but there you go. Okay, this apartment we're looking at is three bedroom, two bath, and it's 2,000 square feet. It's going for $4.2 million. And Bethany has a 225 square foot closet. Okay, so right away Luann says, it's really too much house because the kids have their own places and it's just for me. That's code for, I think it's too much. She said, do you want like an outdoor space? And she said, that'd be great. I'd love an outdoor space. And get an open kitchen, just casual, just a nice casual little place. So the realtor says, I have somebody in my, somebody selling it. If maybe if I can get a hold of him, we can go over there tonight. And she's like, oh, great. So she leaves to go call this person. I have this vision in my head that wouldn't it be great if it was Tom's place? <laughs> oh God. Please say it isn't Tom. It's Tom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dorinda and Luann are chit-chatting on this couch of this apartment that doesn't even belong to them. Luann says, I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry about what happened with you and Sonia. Dorinda said, you know what? You just can't trust her. That's what it is. I don't know if I can ever be friends with her again. She's like a rattlesnake. You just, you gotta grab her by the tail and just shake. And you gotta shake as hard as you can. Because if you stop shaking, that head will come around and it'll bite you. Once bitten, twice shy. <laughs> oh my God. I need to start writing down Dorinda-isms. I could sell them to a fortune cookie company. So now it's the day of Ramona's party and we see Tinsley at her hotel and she's getting her hair done. I feel like this whole episode has been Tinsley getting her hair done. Okay, I think we may have just had a Nivea commercial right in the middle of the episode. Yeah, some heavy product placement happening. Tinsley's sitting down and the girl's there to do her hair and makeup. And Tinsley said, yeah, do you have any lotion? My skin just feels so dry. I'm going to Chicago tomorrow. I love how these women give all these details to like their service people. They don't care. Nobody cares that you're going to Chicago to try and get your boyfriend back. Anyway, she said, do you have anything? My skin feels so dry. And the girl goes, yeah, right here. And it's this Nivea bottle. We see the label and they're taught, mm, oh, it smells so good. Wow, how much did Nivea pay for this? I've never seen them do that before. So Carol shows up at this little tea house, Lady Mendel's. She's sipping tea and she orders little tea sandwiches. It looks very cute. And then we see the clock and I'm like, oh no. Bravo shows that little time stamp in the corner and I know there's gonna be another late situation and I'm wondering if she's waiting for Dorit. But no, it's Luann. <laughs> okay. So now it's two o'clock, nobody's there yet. So Carol calls Luann and she's in a car and she goes, what, what are you driving in from Sag Harbor? No, we're almost gonna be there. How much longer driver? <laughs> and Carol goes, you call the driver driver? <laughs> like, it's just so Luann. So anyway, she'll be there in four minutes. Okay, so apparently it is just the two of them, Carol and Luann, and Carol has asked Luann to tea because she hasn't had a one-on-one -on -one talk with her for a while. She kind of wants to 
clear the air. She said that there's been tension between them for so long now and she just wants to be done with it. She asked her if there was something that bothered her about her and Luann said, no, no. And she said, well, I mean, I hear you talking to other people or you say mean things about Adam. I don't say mean things about Adam. And she goes, well, you called him a toy boy. I know Carol said that on purpose. And she goes, who cares? And then and Carol's like, well, you know, I mean, I do. Well, I mean, I guess that ended okay. They decided that they wanted to move forward in the same direction. I don't even know what that meant. It seemed kind of silly. I don't really feel like anything got resolved other than the two of them saying, okay, let's get over it and move on. So maybe they will, but probably not. Okay, we're back at Tinsley's hotel apartment and uh, I wanna stay there now. The staff is in there fluffing her pillows and she said, is there anything else you need, ma'am? Well, it has been my pleasure to serve you. She like curtsies to her, goes out the door. Wow. Oh my God. Okay. There's a knock on the door. Tinsley goes to open it and Scott is there with flowers, which is really sweet that he showed up because she thought she was going to Chicago the next day. So it's very cute and sweet, except <laughs> Tinsley goes, screams, and then she falls onto the floor. <laughs> I mean, she's in a dress and heels. She's all ready to go to Ramona's party. Oh my gosh, it wasn't dramatic at all. Okay, so Scott says, well, why don't you come to Chicago tonight with me? And she's like, well, I mean, I'm packed already and everything. And, uh, you know, I love shopping, but okay, I'm going to go. She's skipping Ramona's party. Did I mention that I want to go? I will take Tinsley's place. So she calls Carol and Carol was in on it and kind of helped plan it for Scott. So she said, I'm going to go with him. And Carol said, yeah, of course. And it's fine. I'll go and I'll tell Ramona. <laughs> now we see the confession cam with Carol and she said, okay, I hope that Tinsley is playing it cool and keeping it cute. And then we flash back to like two minutes earlier where she's hugging him going, wail like this crying wailing sound oh poor tinsley she can't keep it cool i don't think she should i i don't know i just i don't there's too much game playing in relationships and if she's gaga and loves him i think it's cute i suppose there's a point where she could like go really overboard but i think it's cute that she's showing him how much she loves him <laughs> oh take back what i said the crazy is coming out so three weeks ago carol came over and gave tinsley flowers and that's when she broke up with scott so she's very ritualistic and she's hanging on to these flowers she told herself i'm gonna hold on to them until scott and i get back together so she's telling this to scott and she's holding this bunch of like dead flowers and she said so can I get rid of him now? Tinsley. And he goes, ah, uh, but he did not say yes right away. And then finally he goes, yeah, you, you can get rid of him. And she's like, okay. And she, she opens the garbage can and she's like, ah, 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 like stabbing them into the garbage. Oh. It, it, it's intense. I'm just going to say that. It's it's intense. So we have a scene at Bethany's apartment with her assistant, and she's been getting just hundreds of emails about people in Puerto Rico who are needing help. They still don't have drinkable water. It's been months. So she's planning another trip there, and she's deciding who to take with her. She said, I've never taken anybody with me before, and I don't know. She kind of quickly ruled out Tinsley and Carol because I don't know if she was making fun of Tinsley. She said something like, you know, their eyelash. I, I don't even remember. It was some sort of 
comment about them not having the constitution for it. I guess Dorinda has been asking her the most about it and what it's been like. So she is going to invite Dorinda to go with her. She also said, I'm sorry I can't go to Ramona's party, but I've got a few more important things on my mind. But all these people who are not wanting to go to Ramona's party, are they crazy? Or am I crazy? I feel like they're gonna get like clothes and a big swag bag or something. I don't know why, but I do. And that's why I wish I was going. <laughs> okay, it's the night of Verona's party and she gets her first, oh my gosh, I love this store. I wanna go, the next time I visit my daughter, I wanna go in because they've got the coolest like accessories and stuff, makeup bags and cell phone cases. It looks really cool. And she keeps calling it a shopping party. I don't know what that means exactly, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Everybody gets a discount. <laughs> I thought she was treating her friends to like a shopping spree. We see Tinsley and Scott in the car on the way to the airport, I guess. Tinsley now has to call her mom. Mom, you're not gonna believe what happened. I opened the door, I thought it was room service because I ordered a cheese plate and a glass of wine, and it was. And she gives the phone to Scott and he's like, hi, it's, oh my God, Tinsley. Sweetie, bring it down a notch her mom's pretty funny her mom said oh that's sweet is he coming for christmas and she goes well i mean mom i i don't know maybe i hope so okay because i was just thinking it's so nice here for christmas i was just thinking that i've got stockings for everyone that i needle pointed and she goes and you want to make one for scott well yes i do and i was just wondering what i would put on scott's and I thought maybe I would put his dog. And Tinsley goes, what dog? And she goes, you know, that dog he loved so much with that other girl. It was a dog that Scott had with an old girlfriend. And Tinsley goes, mom, that dog is with the other girl now. Do not put that dog on a stocking. Oh my God. Okay, we are back at the party that I thought I wanted to be invited to so badly. Turns out that everyone there gets 25% off. So it's not even a good discount. Oh, I should have known <laughs> Ramona. I just should have known. Carol's there. There's a bunch of people I don't know who are there. And guess who just showed up? Missy, Missy. Oh my Missy, my Missy. You know, Tom's girlfriend. And Ramona's friend, who Ramona is acting like is her best friend in the whole wide world. I can't wait till Luann shows up. Oh, and here she comes. There's an awkward little exchange between Missy and Luann where Missy said, did you darken your hair? And she said, yes, I did. And she goes, oh, it looks nice. Thank you. Excuse me. And then she goes to the bar to get a drink, but Okay, so this is weird and I'm not exactly sure what she said, but Missy says to Luann and Carol, oh, there's somebody who wants to meet you, Richard. So it's this guy and she goes, I know his parents. And then Carol says, oh, it's nice to see you two talking. And Luann goes, I never had a problem with Missy. And Missy said, when I never had a problem with you. And Carol goes, well, there you go. And Luann goes, I think the man was the problem. Missy said, the man was a big problem. Carol goes, yeah, you dump the guy and you keep the girl. Missy's like, that's what it's all about. I don't think they're gonna be braiding each other's hair anytime soon, but well, maybe. Luann does like those braids. So Sonia's there now and Sonia and Ramona are talking and this does not go great. It starts off with them not even saying a word to each other and then Sonia having the intention to use fewer words just like Bethany coached her, but that all goes to hell when she starts reiterating everything all over again about how you know I didn't cheat on my husband, you didn't stand up for me, Ramona's yelling at her and they're yelling at each other and then they start going like this and yelling to each other. I don't know. I think those two have been friends for a long time too. Ramona ends up walking away from her saying, I, she, I can't talk to her, she's out to lunch. 
and she goes over by Luann and Dorinda. Leaving Sonia in the middle of the store by herself, Sonia kind of wanders over to a rack and she goes, I'm not buying fake stuff, only real stuff, to these two women who are looking at her like she was some homeless woman that just wandered in out of the cold. These two girls are desperately trying to follow a link of a story somehow. And then Ramona goes, I don't know, I gotta go, I'm going. And she takes off and gets in an elevator. She doesn't say goodbye to anybody. Dorinda goes, well, I guess the party's over when the host leaves. But nobody knows the host left. So the party's over and so is this episode. And can I just say I'm glad I wasn't invited? Yeah. I, uh, I miscalculated that terribly. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to leave a comment down below. I'll see you next Wednesday for the next recap of The Real Housewives of New York City. Bye-bye.